Hey guys, Jason here from Modern Money Method. Thanks for checking in again with me. I wanted to bring you guys my monthly Northwest Multiple Listing Service update and my handy dandy little chart here, my tri-county area that I like to show. This is for King, Snohomish, and Pierce County, the three busiest counties in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, wanted to point out something that is continuing that I predicted would continue back in January. And that was that new listings coming on the market would outstrip new closings. And I feel we hit a bottom in December there where we had a significant shortfall of new listings. And this put a real tightness on the market because we had 2,900 listings and 5,200 closings with a deficit of 2,300. And uh, we did not build that deficit back up until in February when we had a month where new listings were 5419 and closings were 3350. And so we are on a four month run here of new listings being greater than closings. In April, we had 7,776 new listings, closings of 5757, adding 2019 homes to the available homes for sale count. And this isn't how many we have, this is just how many we've gone up from December. So this here is the super cool little website that's available to everyone. Go to Northwest Multiple Listing Service and you click on the news and information and this is their May 5th announcement, which is for the month of April. That's some really great summary information in here. One of the shocking things that I did not get correct. I thought house prices would start flattening out the spring of 2022. But due to the fact that people are willing to pay an insane amount, 108% of list price, so that's sales price to list price, people are paying 8% over uh, right now, That's equaling bidding wars. Um, has some great information about condos, houses, uh, number of new listings. This is all the counties added together compared to pending sales. So they do talk about the inventory is climbing. There's getting to be more inventory in almost every county. And you get down here. This is the county by county new listings, pending sales, closings, average price, medium price. And what I wanted to point out besides the fact that Snohomish is gaining greatly on King County, which uh, is just amazing to see because Snohomish used to be always about 20 to 30% less than King County where Seattle is. And is the months of inventory, if you guys remember a couple months ago, these months of inventory were under half of a month. Some of them were even only a third of a month, which is 10 days of inventory. We're starting to creep up on a whole month's inventory. In these big counties, we're still under one, but if you notice, we go down here and look at the smaller counties, they're almost all over one. Some of them have taken significant jumps, uh, like San Juan, that's the island county. We're up to 3.78 months of inventory out there. Here's Kittitas County, 1.8 month of inventory. So I still think you're gonna, you're gonna keep seeing these months of inventory climb which is very good for buyers not having to just jump on the very first thing that they see. And uh, it, it will cause price pressure on the houses because now you won't have the two or three people who are doing crazy bidding on a house uh, willing to pay 8% over list price. Um, the other area I wanted to show was what goes along with um, my chart over here about new listings and closings. This is the four county Puget Sound region pending sales, which is pretty equivalent to closing sales because 95% of pendings close. And uh, this is for King, Snohomish, Pierce, and Kitsap County. And what I wanted to show here that's very important is we are on a 10 month run of month over month sales being down significantly. And you want to compare year over, or I'm sorry, year over year. I apologize. You don't want to compare month over month because as you can see, 
this is January and this is December and this is June and July, that we are very seasonal up here in the Pacific Northwest. Sales in the summertime are significantly greater than they are in the winter months. So comparing, you know, three months ago, six months ago is not a very good comparison at all. You want to compare year over year. And if you notice, this is July of 21 right here. We were down 800 in pending sales compared to 2020. Uh, similar in August, September, October. Now, November, we were down, but we we're only down 100 year over year. And December of 2021, we were down 900 pending sales, which was almost 20% uh, drop, which is very significant. And then we followed through at the beginning of this year. January was down year over year. This is a very low number for January. We hadn't been in the 4,000s since 2012. Um, February was down just a little bit. March was down 700. And uh, April was down a significant amount, 800 units uh, compared to year over year. And uh, if you if you don't count 2020, the last time that April was below 7,000 was a long time ago, 2011. So these pending sale numbers are starting to get pretty weak, and we have 10 months um, where they've been under month over month. And why I feel this is important is because this same trend started in 2006, the summer of 2006. It was June when the year over year numbers compared to 2005 were down 800, almost 1100, 1100, 1300. You can see that the year over year in 2006 started being quite significant, even though house prices kept going up through this. They even went up through the beginning of 2007, even though these numbers comparatively were down. So you were starting to get to where you had year over year, two years in a row down, right? Like let's look at June here. June of 2005 was 88.96. June of 2006 was 80.94, warning signal. June of 2007, 68.76, we start having problems. This is when it started getting pretty obvious that house prices were dropping significantly. And then they fell off uh, a cliff, cliff basically that fall and winter down to very low sale volume. So that didn't start until the summer of 2006. And by the fall winter of 2007, 18 months later, it was obvious we had a housing buyer problem. And that continued for a few years, you can see here. So that's why I think this is very critical that we are in month 10, 10 of this, because if you go 18 months out, it puts us right here in October, November, December of 2022. If this trend continues, uh, what occurs is the uh, new listings compared to the closings keep being a positive. And as you can see, I just called December the zero line. We're already up 7,172 more listings than we have had closings in the first four months of the year. So what ends up occurring is you, you get into the fall and we could have 10, 12, maybe 15,000. You start talking about two, three months inventory. I know to people who've been in the business a long time, that sounds like an even market. I'm going to tell you this time around because people have been so trained to buy without seeing houses, buying online and bypassing inspections and doing everything much quicker that I believe going forward for a significant period, if not for my lifetime, that a balanced real estate market will only be about two months inventory. Anything more than that is going to be the buyer's market because it's just going to feel like a massive amount of houses are on the market since we ran for so long under one month supply. So wanted to thank you guys so much for coming in today, and uh, I will make some more videos soon. Uh, once again, Jason from Modern Money Method, and you have a fantastic day. Give me a thumbs up, please. Comment down in the section. I check the comments and try to respond to all um, of those that I can.